Unless the commissioners have anything else, that concludes our general business as far as hearing cases. But we do have someone who needs to address us tonight. Mr. Davenport, if you're ready, please come forward. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, long time no see. Take your name and address for us. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, it's good to see you as well, sir. Um, I will, Jason Davenport, actually 1720 William Street, which has changed since the last time that I stood before you was here. Um, but ultimately I'm back because um, the county has hired me on a part-time basis and J.D. and I are working together to try to bring some text amendments to you. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, our code has not been updated since 2015. And so at a part, as a part of moving those particular updates forward, um, we have a handout that we've shown you that really show you about the 12 amendments that we think are going to be ready for your consideration by next month's meeting. And so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Nothing but discussion tonight. Questions are fine. We met with the county commissioner, county commissioners at their last retreat to give them a heads up as well, ultimately to try to keep them in the loop and you in the loop about what's coming your way. And so we don't consider any of these um, particular amendments highly controversial. Um, for JD and I, we've been working on them for some time now, and ultimately we just think it's time to pull the trigger and, and see about actually updating our code. At this particular point, we expect these first amendments to be considered by you next month by the county commission early June. And then we're going to take um, maybe a few weeks off, a month off, and then start all back over again. The code works the best, in my opinion, when you're updating it probably every year or two. And it's been closer to eight. And so we've been building up a list of things that need to be done. Um, we think will be an improvement on the way this community is particularly developed. And we're just trying to bring those to the decision makers so they can decide if they want to move forward or not. <clears throat> For those of you that did work with me in the past, um, we have done this plenty of times before. Ultimately, what we're asking you to do is just consider the amendments, provide any feedback or questions that you may have. So we can hopefully um, debate that, sharpen that up in order to bring it to the county commissioners to see whether or not they want to move forward. Very similar thing that you've seen before. We try to take the approach of moving forward in a batch agreement. We try not to bring them to you one at a time. Um, we've learned that if you do that over the years, you bring so many amendments one at a time, it tends to get confusing on the general community about what ordinance is adopted and when is it updated. So we try to bring them to you in small batches. My hope is that once we do this batch and it's considered, we won't see you again for at least six months. And we'll continue that cycle until we feel like we've taken off some of the more pressing amendments that we have. Ultimately, um, you have a schedule here and a list of amendments as well as the staff who's been working on this. Really, Jamie and I and Glenn Coyne, the consultant who actually helped write the OLDC all the way back in 2006, we consulted him on issues that we think are just above our pay grade and we want to make sure we get them right. First and foremost, just a very, very brief update on each of these. Um, the amendment update for number one, right now the Zoning Board of Appeals is required by ordinance, as Mr. Miller knows, to cite one particular criteria when they approve or deny their cases. It's a little bit tighter than what y'all do as a recommendation. We think that criteria should be two, not one. Um, when we started this years ago, it actually used to be they were required to meet six or seven. We felt like that bar was too high. We feel like one is too low, so we want to increase it to two to try to increase that conversation. Code list right now with um, Lowndes County standing up their own inspection department in July. We want to make sure the codes that we reference are current and applicable. Um, the codes that are referenced in there have some language that basically says if it's a 2005 code, it's whatever <coughs> updates are approved through Georgia are automatically adopted. There's some debate at the attorney's office whether or not we can actually do that, so we want to clean that up there. Chickens, I had no idea when I left the chickens would be so popular, but they are. And so I understand that it's been a hard-fought road to make sure we have regulations that balance what property owners can do, while also allowing for some reasonable accommodation for the property owners that don't like it. So we tried to bring that to you so we can get something on the books for that. Time measurement, right now the definition of the ULDC we have of how we measure time, 30-day uh, notices, et cetera, is not consistent with state law, um, and we're going to try to make that consistent. Solar enforcement, again, another um, particular amendment where we probably have spent the most time beyond chickens is making sure we have some administrative policies that deal with solar. Right now, our code is really dominantly silent. We've just been dealing with it through interpretation, and that's led us to some problems where we realize we could have done that better. We just want to put that on the books. Um, the burn ordinance is not actually in the ODC, but we spent a chunk of time on it, so we include it here. But ultimately, the county fire rescue department is interested in updating the burn ordinance and for the county residents who can and cannot burn when they can. Um, daycares are just tightening up some language between what 
typo that we found, as well as the state, as you all know, for those of you that have been here long enough, they changed their definitions on daycare and how many children you can have, who and where, and we want to make sure we're consistent with that. A tree bank, um, right now we have landscaping and tree protection ordinance and protections in place. One of the things we've learned is if you don't meet those, you go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Well, we'd like to give developers another option where they can pay into a tree bank to plant trees or landscaping instead of going to the Board of Appeals and waiting 30, 60 days to get a decision. Or if they're willing to help pay for trees to be planted elsewhere in the community at a comparable cost, then they could choose that as an option. The public hearing procedures. Um, the ULDC does have procedures that could be construed as applying to all development. We think they only apply to the County Commissioner of Public Hearings. We want to clarify that. We don't think it applies to you because you're an independent body. But we want to clarify that and make sure the County Commissioners like the way those procedures are um, listed in the code. Um, we, we think they do. They've tried them out. They've experimented with that. But ultimately, this is about making sure that if they do, it's clear and clarified. Conservation subdivisions. Um, we've had one or two come through the county since we've had those regs in 2006. Ultimately, there's a problem we run. One of the things we were requiring conservation subdivision is for septic tanks to actually be combined into one large septic tank, and the health department just flat out tells us no. So we'd like to do something that we compromise with them on something they're willing to approve without causing a problem for us in the development process. We've done this successfully one time already, um, but it requires a variance, and we just hate to require that variance. We feel like we change the code and make it work. Uh, ZBUA. Right now, there's a code changing at the state level that requires a Board of Appeals contact in case someone appeals a case to the Superior Court. Right now, if someone appeals a zoning case, it goes to Superior Court for them to decide on. If someone appeals a zoning Board of Appeals decision, it does the same thing. They just want to make sure we specify who is the staff person that needs to be contacted to just proceed with that process. Right now, we know it would be JD, um, Trini, it would be the county manager, but state law says we want you to specify that within your ordinance or resolution. And then, of course, minor amendments. Um, this is basically taking Microsoft Word documents, which you can appreciate were created in 2006, updated in 2015, and bringing them up to current standards. There are headings and labels that we would love your feedback on if we miss something, but ultimately it's just taking documents and make sure we update things. And when we make these code changes, we don't end up with typos all over again. We try to fix them when we can. Beyond that, you have a copy of our schedule. We're going to start mentioning this to y'all, ZBOA, TRC, and then bring it back to your official consideration next month. If you have questions or hear things in the meantime, just know from a public hearing standpoint, we do want to meet with some key bodies, probably Moody, um, Home Builder Association, and then the Chamber are probably the only three we have on our list right now. We want to reach out to them and make sure they're aware. Beyond that, we'll get our ducks in a row. We'll present you some draft language next month so you can see exactly what we're changing with strike the underline language, and then go from there. There is no, um, there's a goal for the county commission <coughs> by June, but if you believe these amendments need more time, there's no reason why we can't take more time with this. Um, but for this list, I know it seems like a chunk, but when you see the amendments, one, two pages except for the solar, that takes a little bit longer. Everything else is pretty short, and we think it's a very nice warm up to start this process again. Be happy to entertain any questions. Appreciate the time. So, Jason, we'll get some written material or digital material yes. for the next work session or public hearing session? Uh, work session. So, most likely before um, knowing JD, he's going to send it to you electronically before you get to the next work session. Okay. So, you'll be able to see it and review it, and we can have questions and discuss. And these 12 items that you just addressed, are those, is that a batch? What you call a batch? Yes, sir. We're going to do all those. Yes, sir. So we anticipate there's a point where JD and I have to say, okay, that's enough, and we've reached that point. And so getting these finalized in a format that is ready for you and your consideration is what we'll be doing in the next few weeks, and then we'll share those with you digitally. We have drafts we can share on probably about five of them right now, um, but ultimately we have ideas and things in paper just not quite ready for an official debut just yet. But we know the ideas are, are workable and reasonable and think worth your time. And you, when you present to us again, we'll vote on these individually, or as the batch, or that is your choice. No, if I'm, you I'm are, asking you. If you're comfortable with taking the batch as a batch, you can. If you'd rather say, you know, we'll take these ten, we'd like to talk to these two more. But it's really your preference as a chairman. In my experience, I actually think it works better if you take them all together. We don't mind making amendments on, you know. We would like to approve these amendments, except for you know item four. We recommend a language say 50 feet instead of 30. We certainly can accommodate those changes. All we ask is that we just have enough time to do so, which for the planning commission 
is not normally a problem. It's a little tricky at the county commission level right. because their work session is the day before their main session. Yeah. So it's different for them. But for y'all, we normally have plenty of time to make adjustments on um, comments or questions you may have. And if not, sir, the truth is we can always take more time if we need. Very good. That's all the, all the questions I have. Commissioner, do you have any other questions? I, I would just like to make a comment, Mr. Chairman, um, about number five. I'm glad to see that we're going to have some language because I felt like there was a void there. there Especially, you know, in the past, we've had a couple of cases to come in front of us that we felt like we had no direction on. So I think it's timing is good. Commissioner, I agree. And when JD brought me up to speed, um, it's probably those very same cases was why we put this on a yeah. priority and said, you know, this is basically on our top ten. Right. Cool. Can't wait to talk about chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea they'd grow in popularity in the last five years. <laughs> I had no idea until the last probably six weeks I've been going up to Osceola. I knew Fitzgerald was a chicken town, mm -hmm. but Osceola is now a chicken town. So wherever you go, you see chickens running around in Ocilla. So they've migrated south a little bit. So. We think it's very reasonable for someone in a county like Lowndes to have a small amount of chickens, especially when, even in a residential subdivision. Yes. But, you know, right now, I, I just had no idea in the past five years y'all dealt with so much of it, especially J.D. and Molly on the COVID oh, yeah. side. So you're not talking about chicken houses. You're talking about chickens, period. Yes, sir. Small, small amounts of... Um, Small amounts of chickens, you know, 10 to 12, a dozen or less. Which, with the price of eggs, people are going to want to have their own chickens. <laughs> did, you know, did we have nothing on the books now? I think I asked you a while back as a favor to a friend about chickens. You said you could have less than five, no roosters or something? Correct, still no roosters. And right now, the working, the working definition is six. Okay. Six or less on any, any, any property. Uh, like especially no roosters, roosters but just chickens. Mm -hmm. But that's an incorporated well, area, or unincorporated. Unincorporated. The city is allowed to allow chickens, and that's been the case. Why are you discriminating against the roots? Because they're so bad. Yeah, they yes. grow. And then if you're they're competing in the neighborhood, then they are. I know. I love, we live, you know, one street mm -hmm. off the main street, and somebody has a chicken around our house, and I love it. It reminds, it makes me feel like I'm in the country. Uh, it's a rooster, and he's very loud. But, Commissioner, the challenge that we have and that you have and the commissioners have is how do you allow chickens in places that yeah. are where Ms. Vicki lives and where Mr. Tommy lives? It's not easy, obviously. Yeah. So. It's well, different. we have them in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Seven people have chickens, you know, like five or six, yeah. maybe eight. I don't know. But, you know, it's really no different than the neighbor's dog barking. I mean, really, it's the same thing. You know, the rooster, he wakes everybody up and he's done. You know, the dog, the dog walks all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We have no way to go for a city. We just need to do away with it. I want to burn my trash the way I want to burn it. Thank you very much, Jason. That was a great presentation. Yes. Looking forward to it, Jason. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.